everybody. This is Bob Murphy greeting you from the Polo Grounds in New York with another New York Met game brought to you by Viceroy Cigarettes. Today, the New York Mets beat the Philadelphia Phillies here at the Polo Grounds in a big doubleheader. Lindsey Nelson, Ralph Kiner, and I are on hand to bring you every bit of the action. Yes, sir, the New York Mets are on the air in their first great season. The sun is shining brightly. A beautiful day for the doubleheader here at the Polo Grounds, so if you haven't finalized your plans for the day as yet, we hope you're planning to join us right here at the Polo Grounds for today's doubleheader between the Mets and the Phillies. Say, right now would be a good time to sit back and light up a Viceroy. Viceroy's not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right. And say, how about checking your supply of coal Rheingold? Rheingold Extra Dry. Yes, sir, put some Rheingold on ice, because it can add a lot to your enjoyment of a doubleheader. Now, here is a beer with a clean, clear taste, brisk and bright all the way through. Brewed the long, slow, costlier way, Rheingold is beer as beer should taste. Dry tells you why. Art Mahaffey, the ace of the Philadelphia Mound staff, loosening up now, along with left-hander Al Jackson of the New York Mets, and here are the lineups. For the Phillies, Tony Taylor will be at second base, leading off. Rookie Ted Savage will be in left field, batting second. Don Demeter in, will be at third base, batting third. Roy Sievers playing first. Roy will clean cleanup. Rookie Jackie Davis will be in right field, batting fifth. Tony Gonzalez in center field, batting sixth. The veteran Sammy White behind the plate, hitting seventh. The shortstop, Ruben Amaro, batting eighth. Pitching and batting ninth, Art Mahaffey. For the New York Mets, Jim Hickman in center field, leading off. Elio Chacon will be at short, batting second. Gus Bell in right field, hitting third. Frank Thomas will be in left field, batting cleanup. Charlie Neal will be at second base, hitting fifth. Gil Hodges playing first base, batting sixth. Felix Mantilla will be at short at third base, batting seventh. Sammy Taylor behind the plate, batting eighth. Pitching and batting ninth, lefty Al Jackson. You know, fans, like a lot of ball players these days, I just don't care for the harsh taste of an unfiltered cigarette anymore. But when it comes to choosing the right filter cigarettes, you know, I used to get my signals crossed. Some taste is so strong, I might as well not have switched to filter cigarettes at all. And others taste it so light, well, all the fun and flavor was gone from smoking. Then I discovered Viceroy. What a difference. Viceroy tastes the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. So fans remember there's a big difference in the taste of filter cigarettes. And you can prove it for yourself. Smoke all seven leading filter cigarettes, and I'll bet you'll find some taste too strong, some too light. But Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right, fans. Get Viceroy today. The umpires for today's game, Stan Landis, will work the plate in the opener of the doubleheader. Benny Smith will call the plays around first. Mel Steiner will be at second, and the veteran Dusty Bodges will be at third. Landis, Smith, Steiner, and Bodges, the men in blue. The breeze again, blowing in favor of the right-hand hitters as it cuts across the diamond, blowing from first toward third. At the moment, the skies are brilliant, blue, and clear, and we have a hot day, the temperature in the 80s. Following today's doubleheader, the New York Mets will enjoy an off day tomorrow. And they'll be entertaining the pennant-winning Cincinnati Reds right here at the Polo Grounds on Tuesday night. The Reds coming in for a two-game series Tuesday night and Wednesday afternoon. So we hope you're planning to be with us Tuesday night and Wednesday afternoon for the two-game set against the National League champion Cincinnati Reds. Following the two games with Cincinnati, the New York Mets will be briefly away from home. They'll be on the road for a series in Philadelphia and a series in Chicago, and then they'll return right here to the Polo Grounds to meet the Milwaukee Braves. Glancing at the New York Mets baseball schedule for the future dates, of course, our first night game, a Tuesday night against Cincinnati, and a day game Wednesday with the Reds. Then on the road to Philadelphia and Chicago, and back here against Milwaukee on May 11th, a night game with the Braves. A Saturday doubleheader with the Braves. 
and a single game on Sunday, May 13th. Then the Chicago Cubs will be in for a night game on Tuesday night, May 15th, and a day game on Wednesday, May 16th. Following uh, those two series against the Braves and the Chicago Cubs in mid-May, the New York Mets will then be making their first uh, lengthy road trip of the year when they'll go to Milwaukee, Houston, Los Angeles, and San Francisco before returning home for that big week of baseball against the Los Angeles Dodgers and the San Francisco Giants, starting with the Dodgers in for a doubleheader on May the 30th. Then a night game with the Dodgers on the 31st. The San Francisco Giants coming in for a night game on Friday, June 1st. A doubleheader on Saturday, June 2nd. And a day game on Sunday, June 3rd. Of course, tickets are on sale here at the Bolo Ground seven days a week. They are also available at Grand Central Station at the 42nd and Vanderbilt Ramp, the Long Island waiting room of the Penn Station. And ticket reservations may be made at all Howard closed stores. Right now, Gene Mock and Casey Stingle move out to home plate to get together with Landis, Smith, Steiner, and Bodges. Al Jackson has completed his pregame warm-up tosses. Art Mahaffey has just thrown his last one. And we're just about set to get underway with today's doubleheader. The bats of the New York Mets really springed to life the last two ball games. Although they were beaten day before yesterday, they were behind 10 runs. They got going, wound up losing a tough one, 11 to 9. And in yesterday's exciting game here at the Polo Grounds, the Mets were trailing 6 to 1, but they came up with six big runs in the sixth inning. They had three home runs in succession. They wound up hitting five home runs in the ball game. They got a nifty three inning relief job out of Roger Craig and pulled the game out of the fire to win it by a score of 8 to 6. Crowd's still coming in, and it appears we will have a good crowd on this sunny Sunday afternoon at the Polo Grounds. Right now, Stan Landis, who will umpire the plate in the first ball game, explaining a couple of things in particular about the ground rules to manager Gene Mock of the Philadelphia Phillies. This will be a good day again for the right-hand hitters. Not only is the target an enticing one, but the wind will be working to their advantage. In the second game today, Sherman Roadblock Jones will be on the mound for the New York Mets. And his mound opponent will be the young right-hander from Holdenville, Oklahoma, Paul Brown. Now here are the Mets going out to the field. Now Gene Mock moves down towards third, the manager of the Phillies. Likes to work on the coaching lines at third, and he'll have Harry Peanuts Lowry coaching at first. A lot of baseball to be played in the major leagues today, and we'll follow all the scores for you. Right now, ladies and gentlemen, our national anthem. here at the Polo Grounds with the playing of our national anthem, Lefty Al Jackson on the mound for the New York Mets. In the National League today, the Cubs and Giants will play a doubleheader on the west coast of San Francisco. Pittsburgh and the Dodgers will be playing two games at Chavez Ravine in Los Angeles. Milwaukee and Houston will play a single game at Houston. Here are the warm-ups for the first game today at St. Louis. For Cincinnati, rookie Sammy Ellis will be on the mound. And for the St. Louis Cardinals, Larry Jackson. In the American League, a single game, Los Angeles playing at Detroit. Doubleheader, Minnesota at Cleveland. They're underway in the opener. Jack Kralik against Pedro Ramos. The Twins got one in the first inning. The Yankees playing two at Washington. At the end of three in the opener, New York two, Washington one. The Red Sox and White Sox play two in Chicago. Baltimore and Kansas City will play a single game in Kansas City. Now 
Now Tony Taylor steps in to lead off against Al Jackson. Al making his third start of the year. His fifth appearance. Al has started twice and relieved twice. Little left-hander with a big sack full of curves and sliders, hoping to pick up his initial one of the year. Tony Taylor, right-handed batting second baseman waiting. Runs up as if to bunt, lays off of it. It's outside in low ball one. Tony hitting at 250 on 13 for 52. Mantilla, even with the bag, wide of the line at third. Jackson out of his wind up delivers. Inside and low, ball two, two and oh. Setting up the remainder of the Met defense, Elio Chacon at short. Charlie Neal playing second and Gil Hodges at first. In the outfield, Frank Thomas in left, Jim Hickman in center, around and right, Gus Bell. Pitching 2-0. Oh. Strike on the outside corner, 2-1. and one. Sammy Taylor making his debut in a starting role as he takes over behind the plate today to catch Al Jackson. First game of this doubleheader, the Mets will be up against the number one pitcher of the Phillies, Art Mahaffey. Strike two, he buzzed that one, got the outside edge with it, two and two. For the Phillies, the left fielder, Ted Savage, is on deck, and then Don Demeter. First of two, just underway. Jackson, 25-year-old left-hander from Waco, Texas. He was born on Christmas Day. The 2-2 pitch, that one didn't miss by much. Full count, three and two. Full count, three and two, on Tony Taylor, the leadoff hitter in the game. Taylor, right-hand batter, feet wide apart, bends from the waist. Pitching three and two. Round ball, bounced to short. Elio Chacon drives to his left, has it, throws to Gill, one down. One away, nobody on. They get Tony Taylor on a ground ball to short. That brings up Ted Savage, the left fielder. He was the outstanding rookie in the International League last season. The International League had two great rookies last year, and this fellow Ted Savage and in John Powell, the big outfielder with Baltimore. Savage wound up hitting 325, 24 home runs, and 65 runs batted in. Now Jackson into his windup. The pitch thrown to Savage. Outside and low, it's ball one. Al likes to keep that ball down around the knees. He throws a lot of breaking stuff. And he's sneaky with that fastball. Let's play him just about straight away. Fouled, skimming back over our telecasting booth and out of play. One ball, one strike on Ted Savage. Gene Mock making two changes in his outfield today and starting his two rookie outfielders that are up from Buffalo. Ted Savage in left and Jackie Davis in right. Both had a big year with a very fine pennant-winning ball club in the International League last season, Buffalo. Swing and a miss. Jackson took a little off of that one, and he had him out in front. One ball, two strikes. Al had a good year pitching for the Columbus Jets. He struck out 165 men. Now Sammy Taylor crouched behind the plate, sets up the target. Just off the outside edge, and the count is even at two balls and two strikes. Boy, what a beautiful day for a doubleheader. Ted Savage, a right-hand batter, facing Al Jackson with a count of two and two. Elio Chacon, perhaps a stride or two, towards second, figuring on Savage to hit the ball back up the middle. Jackson cranking up. Inside and low, and the string is out, three and two. He went three and two on the leadoff hitter, Tony Taylor, then got him on a ground ball. Ted Savage plants his feet, contails the batter out. The 3 2 pitch. Ground ball right back to the mound. Jackson has it. Throws the first, two down. Now 
Al Jackson reaching over his head to take the grounder. Two men down. Every time Jackson pitches in a ball game, he provides you with another infielder. He's an outstanding fielder. Now Don Demeter is coming up to hit. Demeter hitting at 250 had two home runs in the game yesterday. He's got a lot of power. Tall, rangy right-hand hitter. He hit 20 home runs for the Phillies last year after he was traded there by the Dodgers for the deal involving Dick Farrell. Strike one call. Jackson letting up a little bit. Got it over a beauty. Roy Severs on deck, and then Jackie Davis. Now Al Wines down comes his pitch. A fly ball hit to right field, not too deep. Bell is running toward the line, slows up now. Gus is there, makes the catch, the side is up. Three up and three set aside by Al Jackson. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. The score in the middle of the first, the Phillies nothing, and the New York Mets coming to bat. Well, ask any manager in the league, and he's sure to agree, the true test of a good hitter isn't his batting average against second-string pitching. No, sir, it's how well he does against the ace pitchers around the circuit. And top-flight competition, well, it's the true test of a cigarette, too. And that's why we say, smoke all seven leading filter cigarettes. You'll find some taste too strong, they might as well not have a filter at all. And others taste too light. They take all the man-sized flavor out of smoking. But I'll bet dollars to donuts, your taste will tell you, Viceroy bats 1,000 against all comers. Because Viceroy's got the taste that's right. One, two, one, two, three, four, go. If your filter cigarette is tasting too strong, don't you sometimes wonder if your brand is wrong? Well, Viceroy tastes the way you'd like a filter cigarette to taste. Not too strong. Not too light. Viceroy's got it. The taste that's right. That's right. That's right. Jim Hickman in center field, batting leadoff for the New York Mets and coming up against right-hander Art Mahaffey. Mahaffey has won two and lost two. He pitched and won the opener of the season for the Phillies, beating Cincinnati 12-4. His next time out, he shut out the Houston Colt 45s, winning 3 to nothing. Then he lost to Pittsburgh 6-3 and lost to Milwaukee and Warren Spahn 2-1. Tall strike, breaking ball thrown to Jim Hickman. Jim had his first major league home run in the game yesterday. Tall Art Mahaffey, the right-hander pitches. Tries a fastball, missing one ball, one strike. Mahaffey has pitched very well in three of his four starts. Jim Hickman batting at 333. Tall, slender, right-hand batter. Played in the Coast League with Portland last year. Sammy White behind the plate. The 1-1 delivery. Swing and a miss. One ball, two strikes. Setting up the Phils defensively. Don Demeter playing third. Ruben Amaro is at short. Tony Taylor at second. And Roy Severs playing first. In the outfield, Ted Savage in left. Tony Gonzalez in center. And around and right, Jackie Davis. Mahaffey pitching and White catching. Foul, back to the screen, no play. Elio Chacon waiting on deck with Gus Bell hitting third in the order. Art Mahaffey. Pitching for the Phillies in the second game today for Philadelphia's Paul Brown. Curve is over, strike three, a beauty by Mahaffey. One away, nobody on. Coming up to hit now, Elio Chacon. Now Elio Chacon stepping in against 23-year-old Art Mahaffey. Big curve is outside, ball one. Mahaffey, a Cincinnati boy, will be 24 on the 4th of June. 
Last year, he won 11 and lost 19. one o delivery. Fastball over, strike call. One ball, one strike. Salihim is coaching at third, and Cookie Lavagetto at first. Chacon hitting at 2 8 Now the pitch on the way, a smash it toward the hole, fielded by Ruben Amaro. The shortstop pegs in hand to Roy Severs, and Chacon is out. This Ruben Amaro of the Phillies is a very fine defensive ball player. Gene Markey feels a little upset every time he thinks of the fact that on May 5th, Amaro returns to the Army. Two outs, nobody on. Gus Bell, the hitter. Now the Phillies will play Gus as a full hitter. The infield and the outfield swings around. A high fly hit the left field. Moving back goes Ted Savage. He's drawing a beat on it. Makes the catch and the side is out. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left on. So at the end of one here at the Polo Grounds in the opener of the doubleheader, the Phillies nothing and the New York Mets nothing. A lot of baseball going from the East Coast to the West Coast this afternoon. The Cubs and Giants will play two in San Francisco. The Pirates and Dodgers play a pair in Los Angeles. Milwaukee and Houston, a single game at Houston. Cincinnati got a run on a homer by Veda Penson in the first inning. So it's Cincinnati won. The Cardinals hitting in the last half of the first. Sammy Ellis for Cincinnati. Larry Jackson pitching for the Cardinals. In the American League, the Angels and Tigers play in Detroit. First game underway at the end of two, Minnesota two, Cleveland nothing. Lefty Jack Kralik pitching for the Twins and Pedro Ramos is out against his old teammates this afternoon. That's the first game of a doubleheader. At the end of four and a half innings in Washington, the Yankees behind Whitey Ford lead Washington three to one. Benny Daniels hurling for Washington. Harry Bright homered in the second and John Shivey has homered in the fifth. Base is clear. That means the score is now three to two with Washington hitting the Yankees in front. The Red Sox and White Sox play two in Chicago. Baltimore and Kansas City, a single game at Kansas City. Roy Sievers will lead off against Al Jackson now in the top of the second. Veteran right-hand hitter. Jackson out of his windup delivers. Inside and low, it's ball one. Roy made a remarkable comeback following... A very severe broken shoulder. Outside and low. About eight years ago, the Washington Senators traded Gil Cohn to Baltimore for Roy Severs. Baltimore made the trade because they had been advised that Roy's career might well be over due to the injury, but lo and behold, he made a tremendous comeback. Taking up high, ball three, Jackson behind at him now, three and oh. He went on to become one of the truly outstanding home run hitters in baseball. Jackson behind on the count, the 3 0 pitch. That's in there for a call strike, 3 and 1. Beavers, after 13 years, has hit 270 home runs. Pitching 3 and 1. Swing and a miss and a fastball. Three and two. In 1953, Roy had hit eight home runs and knocked only 35 runs in. But in 54, he came back all the way. Lane drive caught by Charlie Neal. Hard line drive taken by Charlie Neal. One away, nobody on. That'll bring up Jackie Davis. Jackie Davis played at Buffalo last year. He was a 300 hitter, batted 303. Davis, a right hand hitter. Built along stocky lines, big, thick, strong arms. The outfield playing him to pull as they swing to left. He holds up on the swing, but it's over. Strike called in the outside corner. 
No score. We're in the top of the second. Sammy Taylor working behind the plate, handling Al Jackson. Pitched by the left-hander. He lays off of it. It's outside. One ball and one strike. Well, we'll have a lot of baseball going here throughout the afternoon. We've got a beautiful day for it, so how about joining us? Off-speed delivery by Al Jackson, taken by Jackie Davis in the count two and one. Two balls and one strike. Fly ball hit deep to center field, going at full speed as Hickman. It's way out there. It is over his head. It's on the warning path and straight away center, being run down 475 feet away. Davis is on his way to third. He is in standing up with a tremendous triple. Mr. Jackie Davis really tied into that one. He's strong looking and he's strong when he swings that bat. He hit a line drive that went over Jim Hickman's head and straight away center field. The ball hit for the first time about 15 feet on the warning path going into the clubhouses. It had to be run down at the 475 foot mark by Hickman. Hickman has good running speed. He's a fine outfielder. And anytime you can hit a ball over his head in center field, you have really tied into one. Now the Mets will bring the infield up halfway, and the batter coming up is Tony Gonzalez, the center fielder. A long triple for Jackie Davis. That's his first major league hit. A strike called, and it was major league in every way. The infield in with a runner on third, one down. Tony Gonzalez batting at 302, left hand hitter waiting. Just missed the inside corner. One ball, one strike. Gonzalez had three for five in the game yesterday, including a home run. Now Jackson checks the runner at third. The wind-up pitch on the way. Fast ball over, a good one. One ball and two strikes. One and two, the count on Tony Gonzalez. Jackie Davis on third, one man down. Mets with the infield end. Now Jackson eyes the runner at third. Winds and pitches. Too high, he lays off of it, and the count is even at two balls and two strikes. Al Jackson with a count of 2-2 on Tony Gonzalez. In comes the pitch. Fouled, no play upstairs. Sammy White, the catcher, waiting on deck. Al Jackson reaching back for that little something extra trying to pitch out of a jam now here on the top of the second. Pitching two and two. Fouled again, off the fifth, back upstairs and no play. Now Al turns his back to the plate to get his breath for a moment. The count 2-2 on Tony Gonzalez. Gonzalez came up originally through the Cincinnati organization. Now the 2-2 pitch. A high foul pop-up down the left field line. It's going to be out of play. It's toward the upper deck. Count remains at 2-2 two two on Gonzalez. Last year, Tony hit 277. The windup. In comes the pitch to him. Broken bat ground ball fouled on the third baseline. Had the ball been fair, it was fouled by about a yard. Had it been fair, it probably would have been an easy play for Felix Mantilla. So now Gonzalez will have to get another bat. 
Gonzalez was traded to the Phillies along with Lee Walls for Harry Anderson and Wally Post. That was right on the trade deadline, June 15th, year before last. So in his two years in the National League, he has hit 274 and 277. Mets with the infield in tight. Jackie Davis on third. He hit a tremendous 450-foot triple to straightaway center field. Jackson swings into his windup. Now the pitch. And the ball is popped up to short left field with the infield, and it's not too easy. Back goes Chacon. He's under it now, and Elio grabs it for the out. Ball carried only a few steps into left field, but with Elio playing up on the edge of the infield grass, he couldn't waste a moment. He had to hurry to get back under it. Now there are two away. Sammy White coming up. The Mets can play the infield back. Veteran catcher, Sammy White. He came out of retirement to join the Milwaukee Braves the second half of last year. Tall, rangy, right-hand hitter. Jackson winds the pitch to White. Outside, it's ball one. White has been up ten times, collected two hits this year. Now Jackson's wind a pitch on the way. Taken outside, ball two, two and oh. White hitting seventh in the order. Ruben Amaro, the shortstop, is batting eighth. Now White checks with his manager, Gene Mock, to see if he has the green line on the count two and oh. No score. Phillies with Jackie Davis on third, two men down, top of the second inning. Outside and low. Ball three, three and nothing. Three and oh count on Sammy White. Now the pitch on the way. Outside it's ball four and White walks on four pitches. White was the number one receiver for the Red Sox for seven years. Now the Phillies have runners on first and third. There are two away, and the batter is the shortstop, Ruben Amaro. Ruben hitting at 271. He's a right-hand batter. Fastball over, strike one call. Ruben Amaro was traded to the Phillies in 58 for Chuck Asijan. The pitch by Jackson. He lays off of it. It's outside. One ball and one strike. White on first. Jackie Davis on third. Outside and high, ball two, two and one now on Ruben Amaro. Ruben Amaro hails from Nuevo Laredo, Mexico. He's 26 years old. He's been playing ball for eight years. Right hand batter waiting. Strike on the outside corner, two and two. Amaro started to go after that one, didn't thought better of it, held up, and it was over. The infield and the outfield set up straight away against Ruben Amaro. Now Jackson up in pitching position. Deals two and two. Grounder hits slowly down to third. Mantilla charging. He's up. Here's the peg. The side is up. Good job by Al Jackson. Davis tripled with one out, but is left stranded. No runs, one hit. No errors, two left on. At the end of an inning and a half, the score, Phillies nothing and the Mets nothing. You know, many of you baseball fans these days are filter smokers, and if you're like me, 
You just don't like the harsh taste of unfiltered cigarettes anymore. But even among filler cigarettes, there's a big difference in taste. Some taste so strong, you wouldn't know they had a filler at all. And others taste so light, there's no more fun or flavor in smoking. Well, now you don't have to settle for a minor league taste in your cigarette, because Viceroy tastes the way you'd like a filler cigarette to taste. Viceroy's not too strong, not too light. Viceroy's got the taste that's right. But fans, find out for yourself. Smoke all seven leading filler cigarettes, and I'll bet you'll find some too strong, some too light. But Viceroy's got the taste that's right. That's right, fans. Pick up a carton right away and start enjoying Viceroy's league-leading taste. Frank Thomas to lead off against Art Mahaffey in the last half of the second inning. Frank's off to a real good start. Frank hitting at 327 on 18 for 55, including five homers. High fly, deep to left field, it's up, and there it goes for a home run. Frank Thomas, Took a nice, easy swing and met him a happy curveball just right and sent a towering drive up against the facing of the roof of the polo grounds. For Frank, his sixth home run of the year, he is now tied with Eddie Matthews and Wally Post for the National League lead and the Major League lead. In the American League, Norm Cash and Leon Wagner each have hit six. Neil fouls the ball back to the screen, strike one. That's number six for Frank Thomas. Eddie Matthews, Wally Post, Nor uh, Norman Cash, and Leon Wagner all have six. Mets in front, one to nothing. The no wind-up delivery. Swing and a miss, strike two. Charlie Neal hitting at 354. Charlie up among the top batters in the National League. Right now, Charlie has the sixth highest average. Mahaffey winds and pitches. Strike three called, a fastball in the outside corner. Charlie had six hits and ten times up in the last two games here at the Polo Grounds. Gil Hodges coming up. Gil hit a long home run here yesterday. He hit a home run that carried to the upper deck above the bullpen in deep left center field. For Gill, it was his second of the year. He now has 363 lifetimes. Mahaffey's pitch to him. He starts him off with a fastball over strike one call. Mets hit five home runs in yesterday's game. Pitch on the way, a breaking ball, swung and missed. Felix Mantilla waiting to bat next. Two strike count now on Gil Hodges. Art Mahaffey, the hard-throwing young right-hander from Cincinnati, pitching for the Phillies. Curve is over, strike three call to Beauty, mixing him up. Now before Mantilla steps in to hit, we'll step out for station identification. At the 810 spot on your radio dial, this is WGY Schenectady. Bob Murphy with Lindsey Nelson and Ralph Kanter were in the last half of the second. The Mets lead the Phillies 1-0 on a home run by Frank Thomas, his sixth of the year. Now Felix Mantilla batting swings and misses strike one. Felix hitting at 310 on 13 for 42. 
This Mahaffey has real good stuff. Next pitch. Breaking ball outside. One ball and one strike. Home run by Frank Thomas, his sixth of the year, and his tenth run batted in. Foul tipped. No play. One ball and two strikes on Mantilla. Thomas now has seven hits in his last 11 times up. He was three for five yesterday, three for five the day before, and it's homered his first time up today. Pitching one and two. Players are outside, and the count is even now at two balls and two strikes. Now Art Mahaffey slows himself up just a little bit. Count 2-2 two -two on Felix Mantilla. Two outs and nobody on. Next pitch. Strike three called. A fastball over. And so Art Mahaffey struck out the side, getting Neil Hodges and Mantilla in succession. He has struck out four in two innings. One run, one hit, a home run by Frank Thomas. No errors, none left on. At the end of two, the score here at the Polo Grounds from the opener of the doubleheader. It's now the Mets one. And the Philadelphia Phillies, nothing. What? Thank you, Bob. And the first batter, as Bob Murphy has told you, will be the pitcher, Art Mahaffey. He has just finished a fine inning, striking out the side after giving up a home run to Frank Thomas. Got all three strikeouts for the batter's looking. Al Jackson on the mound throws his first pitch to the right-handed batter. It's down low, ball one. Al Jackson, a left-handed pitcher, 5'11 on the mound. He is making his fifth appearance. He has had two starts and he is relieved twice. Back with a fastball, it's fouled away. One ball and one strike. He has a record of no wins and two losses. He lost his first start to Pittsburgh, 6-2. And he lost his second start to St. Louis, 9-4. Formerly with the Pittsburgh Pirates. Jackson with a 1-1 pitch. It's hit high in the air to center field. Jim Hickman stopping, now moves in, gets under the ball, and makes the catch. Out number one for the New York Mets as they lead in the ball game 1-0. That will bring up the leadoff man in the batting order, Tony Taylor. In the first two games, Taylor walked as a leadoff man in the ball game, and for the first time, the Mets got him out as he led off here in the first inning. He grounded out to the shortstop. He is 0 for 1. Batting 245. Right-handed batter, and he attempts a bunt, but misses the ball. Strike one. Taylor with 13 hits and 53 times at bat. He has no home runs. Jackson back to the plate with a curveball on the outside corner. Strike two. And once again, Taylor made as though he were going to bunt, but he took this one for a called strike. Now Mantilla playing at third base, moving back about five steps. Not defending against the bump with a two-strike count. No balls and two strikes. Jackson shakes off the first sign, takes the second from the catcher, Taylor. Throws it's a ground ball down to the shortstop Chacon. He is up with it over to first base to Gil Hodges in time out number two. Two men up and two men down, and the batter Ted Savage. Savage batting 200. Playing in left field in this ball game. He's a fine young prospect. He has two home runs and five runs batted in. First pitch is fouled away, strike one. Savage has only been playing baseball two years, and last year in the AAA International League, he led the league in batting with a 325 average. He also stole 31 bases, which led the league. He had 24 home runs. What a year for only being in ball two years. 
Al Jackson with a one-strike pitch. is hit high in the air to right field. Bell coming in. Has plenty of time and a lot of room. He is there and makes the catch. And that retires the side. In the inning for the Philadelphia Phillies, no runs, no hits, no errors. And the score at the end of two and one-half innings of play, the New York Mets won, the Philadelphia Phillies nothing. Moving along now to the bottom half of the third inning with the New York Mets leading one to nothing, Sammy Taylor. Well, step in the batter's box. And officially, he has no record with the Mets. He walked in his pinch hitting attempt in yesterday's ball game. All for all. Taylor, a left handed batter, and on the mound, Art Mahaffey. He has given up only one hit, and that was a home run to Frank Thomas for the only score in the game. After the home run, he struck out the side. The right-hander's first pitch, a fastball high, ball one. Mahaffey has a fine fastball. He throws hard. Today's start, his fifth of the year, he has a record of two wins and two losses. One ball pitch on the inside corner, call strike one. He lost his opening start to Pittsburgh, 6-2. to two. Then he lost to St. Louis, 9-4. to four. Curveball hit on the ground through the hole in the right field. Sammy Taylor with his first base hit as the New York Mets rounds his first base and holds there as the throw comes in. That's hit number two off of Mahaffey, and that was off of a curveball. That puts Taylor at first base with no one out, and Al Jackson is the batter. Al Jackson, a good hitter for a pitcher, batting from the left-hand side. The on-deck batter, the leadoff man for the Mets, Jim Hickman. At third base, Don Demeter playing very short. He's looking for the bunt. Beautiful day for baseball and about 20,000 people here in the polar grounds. There's the first pitch. The bunt is on the ground to the first baseman, Seavers. He looks at second. Does not go there. He throws the first base. to Tony Taylor who covers there for out number one. And on the play... Taylor moved on down to second. If you're scoring, it went 3-4. A sacrifice bunt for the pitcher, no time at bat. And he accomplished his purpose of moving the runner on down to second base in closer scoring position. And now Jim Hickman steps in. Jim was called out in the first inning on strike. Yesterday, he had his first major league home run. And Taylor trying to pull a hidden ball trick on... Sammy Taylor out at second base and no avail. Pitcher cannot get on the mound without the ball. Mahaffey was standing off to the side. Mahaffey's first pitch to Hickman. Swung on a miss, strike one. Jim batting 308 on the year. He has four hits and 13 times at bat. Mahaffey taking plenty of time on the mound. Looks at this runner at second and comes back to the plate with a fast, fast ball. Swung on a miss, strike two. Mahaffey had plenty of that one. He is fast. One nothing game, the New York Mets lead. No balls and two strikes, one out. Bottom half of the third. Fastball just outside. Ball one. Defensively for the Philadelphia Phillies. Sam White to catch it. First base Roy Seavers. At second base Tony Taylor. Ruben Amaro the shortstop. Don Demeter the third baseman. In the outfield Ted Savage in left. Tony Gonzalez in center field. And Jackie Davis in right. Davis with the only hit off of Al Jackson pitching for the New York Mets, and it was a big one, a long triple to center field. 
Mahaffey back high. Ball two. Two balls and two strikes. Two balls and two strikes. Jim Hickman, the batter. At second base, Tony Taylor. Make it Sammy Taylor. Two-two pitch. Missing outside. Ball three. Three balls and two strikes. Jim Hickman. The on-deck batter, Elio Chacon. One nothing game, New York Mets lead. Now the three two pitch to Jim Hickman. Hit high in the air to shallow left field. Going back to shortstop. Coming on Ted Savage in left field. The left fielder and Savage makes the catch. Sammy Taylor moving down the line now goes back to second base. Two men out. Now the batter Elio Chacon. Elio grounded out the shortstop in the first inning. He's batting an even 200. Five hits for 25 times at bat. Only run of the ball game, a home run by Frank Thomas. Art Mahaffey has given up only two base hits. The home run to Thomas and a base hit to Sammy Taylor, who is out at second base. Al Jackson has given up only one, and that was a triple to Jackie Davis right fielder for the Phillies. Fine pitchers do on a beautiful day for baseball. A doubleheader day. A happy with his first pitch to Chicago. A sidearm fastball on the outside corner called strike one. Mahaffey has a very peculiar pitching motion. He is slightly herky-jerk on the mound. Moves as though he's going to crossfire. Then comes down over about three quarters. And he's tough on right-handed batters. One strike pitch to Chicago hit in the air to left field. The left fielder Ted Savage moves back, now comes in and makes the catch and that retires the side. In the inning for the New York Mets, no runs on one hit, no errors, one man left, and the score at the end of three. The New York Mets won, the Philadelphia Phillies, nothing. Scores right up to now, we'll keep you posted. And right here now, it's Don Demeter against Al Jackson. And the first pitch to him is pulled foul down the third base side, strike one. Demeter flat out to right field his first time up, all for one. As good power, had two home runs in yesterday's game. There were nine home runs hit in the ball game. He swings and fouls the ball back of home plate, strike two. Demeter batting 245. He has three home runs on the season and 10 runs batted in. Mets lead one to nothing, top of the fourth. Now Al Jackson with a two-strike count on Demeter. Throws high right over the top of the catcher's head. All the way back to the backstop. And Sammy Taylor turns around and catches the ball as it bounces back in the air to him. One ball and two strikes. Demeter broke in in Ebbets Field for the Brooklyn Dodgers in Major League Ball. The next pitch to him is dribbled down to the shortstop. to going in. He can't make it. Comes up with the ball, but had no chance to make the throw. Field of the ball just in back of the pitcher's mound. So Demeter gets the base hit. And that's hit number two off Al Jackson. Demeter's first, and it brings up Roy Seavers. Roy had lined out to... Charlie Neal at second base, and he almost took Neal in the right field with it. It was well hit. 0 for 1. Jackson now with a runner at first. Looks there, comes to the plate, and the pitch is fouled away. Strike 1. Sievers batting 132 for his first season in the National League. He had some great years over in the American League. Last year hit 295 with the Chicago White Sox. One time had 42 home runs for the Washington Senators in a big ballpark. 
Jackson lobs one over to first. Demeter back with no trouble. Jackson has a good move to first base. Back to the plate, a curveball that Seavers takes low. One ball, one strike. One nothing in favor of the New York Mets. They're all even against the Philadelphia Phillies. Phillies won the first game 11 to 9. Mets won the second game 8 to 6, coming from behind to win that one. Again, a throw to first base, but Demeter back. Al Jackson, one ball, one strike. Again goes to first base, this time with a little more effort, but again Demeter back. No one out, the infield playing a fairly deep infield, but Seavers is not a fast runner. He takes outside a fastball, ball two. Two balls and one strike. Hodges at first base, Charlie Neal at second. Felix Mantia at third, and Elu Chacon at shortstop. Now the 2-1 pitch, over to first base instead, and Demeter gets back again. Jackson keeping both Gil Hodges and Demeter alive at first. 2-1 pitch to the plate, a check and a swing, and now Jackson coming off the mound to see why it wasn't called a strike. Sammy Taylor moves out after talking to the home plate umpire, Stan Landis, and Landis indicates it's ball three. Three balls and one strike. Seavers had a pretty good attempt at it. And I can imagine that the Met players are yelling if he'd have hit it, he'd have hit it out of the ballpark. But the count, three balls and one strike. There's strike two as Jackson comes back in the outside corner. So now Seavers and Jackson all the way down the line, three balls and two strikes with no one out. Demeter at first base to score the game one to nothing. Mets lead it. Jackson looking at his man at first base. Comes to the plate. He's running. It's fouled away. So the count will stay at three and two. Three balls and two strikes. The on-deck batter, Jackie Davis. He has one of the two hits given up by Al Jackson. Jackson to the plate with the runner going. The pitch is ball, strike three, to throw to second base, the dive and the tag, and he is out. Seavers called out in strikes for the first strikeout, and then the completion of the strikeout double play as Demeter running on the play was thrown out. From the catcher, Taylor, to the second baseman, Charlie Neal. And Charlie Neal had to make a diving tag and got Demeter as he moved away from the bag. So two men down, and the batter now, Jackie Davis. Davis had a triple to center field, deep in the well in center, about 450 feet away. He takes a curveball in the outside corner, strike one. Now Jackson with the windup and the one strike pitch to the right handed batter. Inside and low, ball one. Davis batting one for four. The three base hit is first this season. If he'd have chopped that one up in singles, he'd be leading the leg. It was really hit. Jackson with the one one pitch. Swung on a miss, strike two, a curveball. Davis last year played at Buffalo where he had 16 home runs and hit 303. The 1-2 pitch. Curveball just outside. Two balls and two strikes. Mets have a one-run lead in the ball game. Top of the fourth with two men out. Jackson with his 2-2 pitch. Swung on, foul tip back in the catcher's glove, strike three. Well, Jackson picks up two strikeouts in the inning, and that retires the side. 
In the inning for the Philadelphia Phillies, no runs on one hit, no errors, no one left. And the score at the end, a three and one half innings to play. The New York Mets won, the Philadelphia Phillies, nothing. Moving along now to the bottom half of the fourth inning with the New York Mets coming to bat and they have a one-run lead. And the leadoff man for the Mets will be Gus Bell. He'll be followed by Frank Thomas, who had a home run in the ball game, and then Charlie Neal. Art Mahaffey with his first pitch, a curveball. It's down low, ball one. Mahaffey has given up two hits so far. One to Sammy Jader and one to Frank Thomas. But one big one, a home run by Thomas. Fastball by Mahaffey is outside. Ball two. Just flat out to left field in the first inning. He is 0 for 1. Just batting 149 in the season. Seven hits and 47 times at bat. Now Mahaffey back. And he catches on the outside corner at the Leathers. Strike one call. Two balls and one strike. Two balls and one strike. Bell singles in the center field off a of fastball. Coming in now, Tony Gonzalez, he is up and holds him at first base. And now, while we wait for Frank Thomas to come to bat, we pause for station identification. The time, five minutes past three o'clock, WABC AM and FM. Temperature, 70. Number three off of Mahaffey and Frank Thomas in the batter's box. And Frank gets a tremendous ovation for his work here for the New York Mets. He has scored the only run of the game, and that was on a home run. Frank batting 339. He has five, six home runs now. That ties him for the big leadership. A happy with a fastball that's off of his wrist, and Thomas gets first base free. That'll move Gus Bell down to second, so Mahaffey trying to brush Thomas away from the plate. Got him. That puts runners at first and second and brings up Charlie Neal. Now Stan Landis going out to take a look at the ball and to say something to Art Mahaffey. And out at first base, Gus Marsh looking at Frank Thomas's wrist. Actually up around the elbow area. Frank did not rough going down to first base, and that's one thing most ball players will not do. Even though it might really hurt, they don't want to indicate in any way that the pitcher has that kind of stuff to hurt him. Gus Marsh coming off the field. Thomas evidently okay. He's a big, strong guy. And the Mets now with runners at first and second base with no one out and a one-run lead. Charlie Neal who was called out in strikes in the second inning. In the batter's box, he's hitting 347. Spurs around as though the bunt. The third baseman and the first baseman charging, but Neal takes outside, ball one. Charlie with two home runs yesterday, now looks down at the third base coach, Donnie Heyman. He gets his sign, steps in the batter's box. Demeter in shallow at third. Here comes Seavers in from first base. They're looking for the front. Neal swings away, but misses strike one. One ball and one strike. Well, Demeter is not used to playing third base, and I'm sure that when he saw Neal swung, he probably said, boy, I'd like to get back to that outfield. He couldn't have been more than about 60 feet away when Neal let that bat go. He's still in there, though, and they're still anticipating a possible bunt. Runners at first and second with no one out. I'm a happy with his 1-1 pitch. There's a punt down the first base side. Devers is up, goes to second base, and gets away from the second baseman. Thomas going down the third down, coming in from third base, Gus Bell. And Charlie Neal ends up at second. Roy Devers, the 
with the option of going to the second base area after he fields the bunt. And he threw to the shortstop covering there, but the throw was in the dirt. It got by Amaro in the center field. Moving over on the sacrifice play, Gus Bell to third base, and he scored on the air. Going to third base from first base, Frank Thomas, and ending up at second base on the bunt play, Charlie Neal. So a run in the score now, two to nothing in favor of the Mets. Runners at second and third, and the batter is Gil Hodges. Here comes Gene Mock out to the mound. Charlie Neal gets the sacrifice, and the air is charged, allowing the run to score. Drive in the center field, a base hit. Donald's up with the ball. Here comes Neal in the score. 
throw a cutoff, but not cut off. It gets by the first base receivers. And Hodges, who landed at third base, started to come in and held as Sammy White came up with the ball. with a run driven in and a single. He scored Johnny Neal from second base and moving over on the play to third base. Neal Hodges and on the throw down, Mantia goes to second. Monitor 62 is a familiar voice. We can see whether the official score will give Roy Severs or the outfielder an error as Severs was attempting to cut the ball off. He might have had a play at third on Gil Hodges. Now stepping in the batter's box, Sammy Taylor. An air charge to Roy Severs. He scored a feeling that he could have gotten his man at third. The first pitch to Taylor fouled away. Strike one. No three errors in the inning for the Philadelphia Phillies, and the Mets lead it four to nothing. on the mound, and in the inning, he's given up only two base hits, a total of three in the ball game, but the New York Mets have scored four runs. Four in the ball game, actually. Now Mahaffey with a two-strike pitch, it's fouled, and the ball was dropped by the catcher, Sammy White. So Taylor gets the life, and the count holds it on two. at second and third. Neil Hodges at third base. Felix Mantia out at second base. The infield playing in on the left side. A little bit back on the right. Next pitch to Taylor is taken inside. Ball one. One ball and two strikes. Single in his first time up. That was his first base hit at his Mets. Next pitch to him is outside. A curveball, ball two. Two balls and two strikes. All right, my happy, the right hander looking for the sign. Betty with runners at second and third, and no one out. He winds and deals. A curveball fouled off the mat. And the count will hold at two and two. Gus Bell started the inning with a single to center field. Then Frank Thomas, who had previously hit a home run for the only score of the game, was hit by a pitch ball. Then from there on, three errors entered into the scoring, which allowed the New York Mets to score three runs. I'm a happy with a 2-2 pitch to the catcher, and it's a fastball. It's outside and high, ball three. Warming up in the bullpen for the Philadelphia Phillies, Frank Sullivan. He has appeared in both of the games of this series. Yesterday was a losing pitcher, although actually a victim of circumstances. He pitched only two batters, walked one of them, got the other out, and the winning run scored on a wild pitch by Chris Short, who relieves Sullivan. Now the full count pitch to Taylor. Curveball dribbled down towards the first baseman. This will score a run. The second baseman Taylor is up with the ball, gets Taylor at first base, he throws to Roy Severs, and moving over to third after Gil Hodges scored, Phoenix Mantia. Run number four in this inning, and the score now five to nothing in favor of the New York Mets. Now 
in the batter's box, Al Jackson. Still only one man out. And the infield playing in with Mantia at third base. Jackson, a left-handed batter, and he's a good one for a pitcher. Against Art Mahaffey. First pitch to him, gets by the catcher, and Mantia will score. A wild pitch to Art Mahaffey, allowing Mantia to score from third base. So just about everything coming off here in this inning as the New York Mets score five runs to take a 6 nothing lead. strikes on Jackson, and now the infield moves back, but no one on base. Six-nothing New York, and one man down. Art Mahaffey to the pitcher with another pitch that's outside, but this time White holds on to it. Ball two. Down low, ball three. No Jackson now with a count of three balls and no strikes. The on-deck batter, Jim Hickman. A happy end of the windup, the 3-0 pitch. Call strike one. The fastball through at the letter. Three balls and one strike. Next pitch is ball four, and Jackson gets first base. That's the first walk issued by Mahaffey. Jackson getting his sweater, going down to first base, and Jim Hickman now coming in. Hickman, the eighth batter to bat in this inning, looks down for the sign. From Sally Hemus, the third base coach. One out to score, 6 0 New York. A happy with a runner at first, looks there, comes to the plate with a fastball right on the outside, corner of the knees, strike one call. back with a one strike pitch this time he throws the curve it's outside ball one one ball and one strike five runs in the Mets have had two hits in the inning there have been three errors and a wild pitch and a walk Mahaffey 1-1 one, one to Jim Hickman the curve ball it's outside ball two One ball and two strikes. Make it two balls and one strike. Still going in the bullpen, big Frank Sullivan, the six foot eight relief pitcher for the Philadelphia Phillies. Ricky Lavagetto, the first base coach, talking to Al Jackson. Jackson goes, the ball is running on the left field line off Dusty Bogus leg, but it's foul. Now Bogus is slipping around, and that ball was a line shot on a hit and run play. That one had to hurt. The ball bouncing off of Bogus's leg into the stand. That ball was just foul. Dusty Bogus, the third base umpire, stands right on the foul line, straddling the line. And it hit his right leg, which was about six inches in foul territory. Now Dusty is down there, Dusty off his knee, and that had to hurt. The ball caroned about, caroled up into the stands about 60 feet away. So Casey Stengel using Jackson in the hit and run play, and it just missed coming off. Got now two balls and two strikes. Curveball fouled off to the end of the bat, so the count will stay at two and two. Lavagetto attempting to field the ball gets an error in the play. 
by the fans in the stands. They have a good crowd, about 20,000 people here. At least according to park superintendent, Mr. O'Keefe, he was guessing that they would have 20,000 a day, and it's been a beautiful day all the way. 6-0 game in favor of the Mets. 2-2 Two -two pitches, outside ball three. So Art Mahaffey, after walking out Jackson, and that was his first walk, now has a 3-2 count on Jim Hickman, and we'll see whether Jackson will be going here. Jackson, a good athlete, is a good runner. 3-2 pitch, throw to first base, and Mahaffey, who has a good move, doesn't get his man, but he certainly arises some controversy with that move. 3-2. Jackson does not go. The pitch is drilled to left field. It'll go all the way. A home run. Here comes Al Jackson across home plate with run number seven. And now coming in from third in the cross home plate, Jim Hickman with his second home run of his major league career. And that brings out Gene Mock as the score goes eight to nothing. Jim Hickman, and that brings in Frank Sullivan from the bullpen. All the New York Mets who went quite a few ball games running. That's hit number three, and a big one by Jim Hickman, and that brings in Frank Sullivan from the bullpen. All the New York Mets who went quite a few ball games without any hitting at all have come along in their last three games with plenty. They scored nine runs against the Phillies in a losing effort on Friday. They lost 11-9. They scored eight runs yesterday in a winning effort when they defeated the Phillies eight to six. And now they have scored eight runs in four innings here against the Phillies as they lead the ball game eight to nothing. Art Mahaffey, sort of a victim of his teammates, gave up only five hits in allowing the eight runs. There were three errors in the fourth inning which certainly contributed to the scoring. So he is out of the game. His record now. Two and two, and he is the pitcher up record in the game as the losing pitcher. Well, Bob, what do you have on the scores right now? Okay, Ralph, they are underway in San Francisco. Glenn Hobby against Jack Sanford. The Cubs did not score in the first. That's the first game of a doubleheader. The Pirates and Dodgers will play two games in Los Angeles. Nothing there as yet. Milwaukee and Houston play a single game. St. Louis leads Cincinnati eight to one at the end of three and a half innings in their first game. Mo Drabowski replaced Sammy Ellis. He's the young rookie right-hander that walked 11 against the Mets out there. Larry Jackson pitching for St. Louis. Beta Pinson homered in the first. Nobody on. That's the first game of two. Cardinals lead 8-1 over Cincinnati after three and a half. In the American League, in a single game, Los Angeles Angels nothing. Detroit Tigers nothing after two and a half. Dean Chance on the mound for the Angels and Phil Regan pitching for Detroit. First game of a doubleheader at the end of six and a half innings. The Minnesota Twins lead Cleveland four to two. Bonikowski has replaced Jack Krelick in the sixth inning for the Twins, but Cat Grant has relieved Pedro Ramos. Chuck Asician hit a home run with a man on in the sixth inning for the two Cleveland runs. Final score, first game of a doubleheader, the Yankees beat Washington 3-2. A seven-hitter for Whitey Ford, and the Thunders now have lost 12 straight games. Benny Daniels, the loser, relieved by Jim Hannon in the eighth inning. Home runs by Harry Bright and John Shivey for the two Washington runs, both of the bases empty. In the second game, Buddy Daly pitches for New York and Joe McLean for Washington. At the end of two and a half innings at Comiskey Park, Chicago won the Red Sox nothing. Swore for the Red Sox and Johnny Bazaar pitching for the White Sox. Baltimore at Kansas City, a single game. Now the pitching change has been made. Frank Sullivan on to relieve starter Art. And ready to resume, and here again is Ralph Kiner. Thank you, Bob. And now up at bat, the ninth man in the bat, batting order today, Elias Chagone. First pitch to him by Sullivan as the changeup swung on a missed strike one. To go now, the ninth man to bat in this inning. As the Mets have scored seven runs to lead the ball game eight to nothing. Sullivan back 
Fastball calls strike two. This is Sullivan's eighth appearance. He's made two against the Mets. He worked two and two-thirds innings in the first game of the series. And he gave up five runs and five hits in that one. Inside and high, ball one. One ball and two strikes. Yesterday, he was a losing pitcher. As he worked one-third of an inning, he gave up no hits. But the one run that scored, the one that put the New York Mets ahead. Foul ball, popped up in the air, back of home plate. Coming back, Sammy White, and he can't get to it. The count will stay at one and two. So Frank Sullivan, six foot eight, with a record of no wins and one loss, in the ball game in place of Art Mahaffey. Mahaffey officially worked three and one third innings, giving up all eight runs, allowing only five hits. He struck out four and walked one. Sullivan to Sammy White with the one-two pitch. Chacon takes high. Two balls and two strikes. Only one man out. Bottom of the fourth inning. Sullivan back to Chacon with a curveball. It's low. Ball three. So now Chacon with a 3-2 count against Frank Sullivan. And the on-deck batter is Gus Bell, who started it all out with a single to center field. Sullivan with the 3-2 pitch to Chacon. It's on the ground, through the middle, in the center field. A base hit. Chacon rounding first base, holds there, as Gonzalez throws on in. So Chacon keeps it going, and here's Gus Bell, the 10th man to bat in this inning. Gus has one hit and two times up. His single started... All the action here in the fourth as the Mets have picked up seven runs. This is the first time in the history of the New York Mets that they have sent 10 men to the plate. Chacon running, the pitch is down low. White throw, not in time. Chacon with a stolen base. A tough chance to throw on as the pitch was a curveball down low. And off the dirt, straighten up and throw, and Chacon, who can run, beat the throw for a stolen base. The count, one ball and no strikes on Gus Bell. Bell, a left-handed batter. Next pitch to him, a slow curve, swung on a miss, strike one. One ball and one strike. Well, the Phillies have been out in the field one half an hour in this inning. One-one pitch to Bell, hit on the ground, bouncing ball to the first baseman Seavers. He takes it, throws to Sullivan, covering at first base, and on the play, as Bell goes out, Chacon moves over to third, and that brings up Frank Thomas. Frank Thomas, who hit his sixth home run to put the Mets out in front in the second inning, one to nothing. Now in the batter's box, he is tied for the National League lead in home runs. Officially today, one for one, he was hit by a pitch ball in the fourth inning, and he is batting for the second time in this inning. Eight to nothing game in favor of New York. Two men out, Chacon at third base. Thomas, the 11th man to bat in this inning. Thomas makes as though he would bunt with them and are playing a deep third base but the pitch is outside and he takes it ball one now Sammy White walking the ball back to the pitcher's mound to talk to Frank Sullivan White and Sullivan are inseparable buddies they do everything together and it probably is very true that the reason why Sammy White came back to baseball was because he could be with his friend Frank Sullivan White was out of baseball last year Frank Thomas with a 1-0 count. Takes outside, ball two. Two 
Three balls and no strikes. Sullivan throws a fastball. It's foul tip. Strike one. It's interesting to note that Sullivan is taking this stretch on the pitcher's mound now with a runner at third base. So he's not taking any chances with Elio Chico running out there. Elio with the possibility of stealing home. They know he likes to run. Two outs. Mets have eight runs. The Phillies have none. Inside fastball. Swung on a miss. Strike two. Two balls and two strikes. Two pitch to Frank Thomas by Frank Sullivan. He's in the stretch to the plate. This time they hit him on the shoulder. So Thomas in this inning hit twice by a pitch ball goes down the first base. Now while we have time, as the home plate umpire Stan Landis cautions Gene Mock about the possibility of an intentional throwing, we pause for station identification. This is WGYE 10 on your radio dial, the General Electric Station Schenectady. Stan Land is still continuing to discuss the situation with the manager of the Philadelphia Phillies in regard to Frank Sullivan throwing at Frank Thomas. Thomas twice hit by pitch balls here in this inning. And now Land is going out to the pitcher's mound to talk to Sullivan personally. And Dusty Boges there in the conversation. Now here comes Gene Mark. So a little bit of everything in this inning as the New York Mets have scored seven runs. And now waiting to bat... Their 12th batter in the inning, Charlie Neal. Runners at first and third. Felix Mantia at third base. Frank Thomas at first base. And Gene Mock walking back, talking to Stan Landis. Just off of the home plate area. The Mets have had only four hits in the inning in scoring their seven runs. There has been three errors involved, a wild pitch, a couple of hit batsmen, a home run, whatever you like, whatever you say. Now we're all set to go. Frank Sullivan, who came in the game in relief of Art Mahaffey, going to Charlie Neal on the first pitch at call strike. Charlie 0 for 1 in the inning is 0 for 2 in the day. He was safe on the fielder's choice in the inning. A hard ground ball to Demeter. He is up with it. Throws to the second baseman, Taylor, and he almost throws it away. But Taylor made a one-handed grab to retire the side. In the inning for the New York Mets, seven runs on four hits, three errors, two men left, and the score at the end of four innings of play, the New York Mets eight, the Philadelphia Phillies nothing. Well, it was quite an inning for the New York Mets, their biggest of the year, and here to tell you all about it, once again, Bob Murphy. Well, that was an inning to remember for the New York Mets as they came up with their biggest inning of the young season. They had a six-run inning in the game yesterday to come from behind and overhaul the Phillies. And now by scoring seven runs in the last half of the fourth inning, they have gone in front by a score of eight to nothing. And you can bet that it's mighty encouraging to Casey Stingle, the way young Jim Hickman has suddenly caught fire at the plate. Jim came in the ball game in the top of the eighth inning yesterday. In the last half of the eighth inning, hit a home run. And in the game today, off Art Mahaffey, he belted a curve high up into the upper deck for a two-run homer. 
For the New York Mets, eight runs on six hits and no errors. For the Phillies, no runs, two hits and three errors. Tony Gonzalez will be out to lead off in the fifth inning against lefty Al Jackson. First game of a doubleheader. We've got a lot of baseball action still out in front of us, so we have a beautiful day. If you're in the neighborhood, why not plan to join us? Tomorrow, an off day, and Cincinnati will be here for the first night game of the season on Tuesday night. That's a two-game series against Freddie Hutchinson's pennant-winning Reds Tuesday night and Wednesday afternoon. Then a week on the road and back here on May 11th for a night game against the Milwaukee Braves. Tony Gonzalez, Sammy White, and Ruben Amaro will be coming up in the top of the fifth inning. Left-hander against left-hander, Tony Gonzalez facing Al Jackson. Lined hard into right field for a base hit. Gus Bell playing the ball in the first skip, whips it back in to Charlie Neal, and Gonzalez is on with a clean single to right field. Al Jackson was in the dugout for about 40 minutes while the Mets were scoring their seven runs in the last half of the fourth inning. Sometimes it takes a pitcher a few hitters to get back in a good groove after being off the mound that long. Now White comes up for his second time at bat. He drew a walk his first time up. Left-hander Chris Short has been given the go-ahead by Gene Mock to get ready in the bullpen, indicating that Mock may want to go to a hitter here on the top of the fifth inning for the number nine spot in the order. Pitched by Jackson. Fly ball to center field. It's deep. Back goes Jim Hickman. He's back to the warning path. He's under it now. Makes the catch. Jim Hickman gliding smoothly back to the edge of the warning path and straight away center to take down the long fly hit by Sammy White. One man away. That's the way the pitchers like to work in this ballpark with a big center field area. They like to try and pitch so that the hitters will hit the ball to the alleys or straight away where there's plenty of room to go get them. ball and no strikes on Ruben Amaro, the shortstop. The Mets in front, eight to nothing. We're in the top of the fifth inning. Now Jackson checks the runner, and the pitch of Squibbler hits slowly down the third baseline. They'll let it roll. It's a foul ball. Well, the minute that ball twisted over the line, Jackson was on top of it to keep it foul. twisting down the right field line and this will be out of play. One and two on Ruben Amaro. The Mets leading eight to nothing. We're in the top half of the fifth inning. Now Jackson off the stretch. Delivers to the plate. Swing and a miss. Al Jackson fanning Ruben Amaro, and there are two away. He got him with a breaking ball that had him fooled. That for Al is his second strike out of the game. Check that his third strike out of the game. Frank Sullivan is scheduled up, but Billy Consolo is being sent up to bat for him. Billy Consolo, right-hand batter with good running speed. He was originally signed as a bonus ball player by the Boston Red Sox. Now Jackson up in pitching position. Kicks the leg, delivers. Fastball over, strike one. Gene Mock will have a problem to solve when Ruben Amaro returns to the Army on May 5th. He'll have to decide between Billy Consolo, Bobby Malkmus, and Billy Klaus to take over the job. 
Two outs, the runner on. Down comes the pitch. Line drive into right field. This will be a base hit. Taken on a hop by Gus Bell. Gonzalez turns at second. He'll hold there. Phillies now have a total of four hits in the game, and it brings up Tony Taylor at the top of the order. Now Sammy Taylor takes time and moves out to the mound to talk to Al Jackson. Two runners take a lead. Taylor, right-hand batter, takes the pitch outside, ball one. Seven runs came across the plate in the last of the fourth inning. It was a wild fourth inning. Ground ball, past the mound, towards second. Neal is up, flips over to Chacon, forced play to retire the side. No runs, two hits, no errors, two left on. Now the Phillies will have a new pitcher coming out for the last half of the fifth inning. And it'll be a left-hander, Chris Short. So we've come halfway at the end of four and a half. The score of the New York Mets, eight. And the Philadelphia Phillies, nothing. Well, in the last of the fifth inning, the New York Mets will have Gil Hodges coming up against the left-hander, Chris Short. This will be the second appearance in this series. by Chris Short. He was in the game yesterday, worked an inning and a third. And it was Chris Short who uncorked the wild pitch that saw Rod Keneal, who had been inserted by Casey as a pinch runner. And Keneal came all the way home from second base, sliding in safely on the big play of the game. The Mets coming from behind, that was the seventh run of the game for New York. They went on to pick up an insurance run on the home run in the eighth inning by Jim Hickman. And it proved to be more than Roger Craig needed as Roger turned in three very strong innings. Craig allowed no runs and gave up just one base hit. Gil Hodges. Gil has been called out on strikes, reached safely on a fielder's choice. He's 0 for 2. Tall left-hander pitches in the dirt, ball one. Christopher Joseph Short from Milford, Delaware. He stands 6'4", and weighs about 205. Breaking ball over, a call strike to Gill. One ball, one strike. New York out in front, eight to nothing. We're in the last half of the fifth inning. First game of a doubleheader. Last year with the Phillies, Short won six while losing 12. The year before that, he was six and nine. The one-one pitch, another breaking pitch, but it's outside. Two and one as Gill lays off of it. Felix Mantilla on deck, and then Sammy Taylor. Two home runs by the Mets in the game by Frank Thomas, his sixth of the year to tie him for the Major League lead and by Jim Hickman, his second in two days. As a matter of fact, his second in four times up. Bounced foul off the plate, grabbed by Sammy White. No play in the count, 1959, Short won 12 and lost 9 at Indianapolis to earn a trial with the Philadelphia Phillies. Last year, he was with the Phillies practically all year. He was with Indianapolis a very short time. He pitches 2-2. Two two. Lane drive to left field. A base hit for Gill. Hit the ball hard. Hodges around first. Holds up there. As Ted Savage, the left fielder, gets the ball back to the infield. That is the seventh base hit in the game for the New York Mets. Now 
Now Felix Mantilla waiting. Low breaking ball taken. One ball and no strikes. Felix single to center, driving home a run in that big seven-run fourth inning. Felix has one hit and two times up today. Well, Sally Hemus and Cookie Lavagetto have had plenty to do in this ball game. The Mets sent nine to the plate in the fourth inning and scoring seven. He bluffs it a bunt, takes all the way. Ball to two and zero. Oh. Nothing here tomorrow, but a big win that Tuesday night. The first night game of the year. The National League champion Cincinnati Reds will be in. Two games with the Reds, Tuesday night and Wednesday afternoon. Then a week on the road, and then back here with Milwaukee on the night of May 11. Now Short makes the one-second stop. Kicks the leg, around comes the arm, and he gets it in there for a call. No balls and a strike on Felix Mantilla. Second game pitchers today for Philadelphia, right-hander Paul Brown. For the New York Mets, right-hander Sherman Roadblock Jones. Gill edging away from first. There he goes, the 2-1 pitch, a bounding ball hits slowly down to third. Demeter charging, he's up, he throws, wide throw into foul territory. Mantilla headed for second, Hodges heading for third. They'll hold there at second and third. The throw by Don Demeter. Wide on the home plate sag. Seaver's unable to touch it at all, and the ball goes over into foul territory against the field box railing. The runners wind up on second and third. It's an error charge to Don Demeter on the throw. Now the Phillies have to bring the infield in with runners on second and third. Nobody out. Left-hander against left-hander. Sammy Taylor steps in against Chris Short. Sammy single to right his first time up in the third inning and was thrown out by Tony Taylor, the second baseman, in the fourth inning. The wind up and pitch to him. Ground ball hit down to first. Seavers has it. The runners will hold. He makes the unassisted play one man down. With the infield up on the grounder. The runners are forced to hold, and that'll bring up Al Jackson. Al getting a nice hand as he comes up. down a real good sacrifice bunt his first time up in the third walked and later scored in the fourth so Al doesn't have an official time at bat the infield is in the pitch to him swing and a miss strike one Jackson cow tailing that bat around, waiting now on the big left-hander, Chris Short. In comes the pitch. Outside and low. One ball, one strike. The New York Mets out in front, eight to nothing. We're in the last half of the fifth inning. Now short off the stretch. The 1-1 pitch. Swing and a miss. Ball was up in his eyes and Al went right after it. He liked the looks of it. One ball, two strikes. New York, eight runs on seven hits and no errors. The Phillies, no runs, four hits, four errors. It's been quite a day for Frank Thomas. Frank has been up three times. His first time up, he hit a home run his sixth of the year. The next two times up, both in the fourth inning, he was hit by a pitch. 1-2 delivery. Low and outside. 2-2. Two, two. Gil Hodges on third. Felix Mantilla on second. One man out. 
Left side of the infield, up on the edge of the infield grass, and the right side about four strides back off the edge of the carpet. The 2-2 pitch. Strike three called, and Jackson is caught looking. Now there are two away, and it's the top of the batting order for young Jim Hickman. Jim Hickman stepping in. Jim hit a home run his last time up with a man on. His second home run in two days. Outside is ball one. Jim hit 11 home runs with Portland in the Coast League last year. He's from Henning, Tennessee. Jim will have a birthday coming up before very long. And when he does, he will be 25 years old. That's over for a call strike. One ball and one strike. Hickman, 6'3", weighs about 195. He lays off of it, outside and low, two balls and a strike. Chris Short is the third pitcher used by the Phillies. Art Mahaffey appeared to have real good stuff. He... Didn't get many good breaks in this ball game. Then Frank Sullivan came on to replace Mahaffey. Sullivan went out of the game for a pinch hitter, and Chris Short took over. The 2 1 delivery. Swing and a miss, and the count is even at 2 and 2. Gil Hodges on third, Phoenix Mantilla on second. Gil opened the last of the fifth inning with a base hit to left, a hard line drive. He raced to third on Mantilla's slow bounder to third in which Don Demeter's throw went wide and over into foul territory. The left-hander deals two and two. Swing and a miss. He struck him out with a low fastball. So Chris Short gets out of the jam by Fanning, Al Jackson, and Jim Hickman. No runs, one hit, one error, and two left on. And now five innings complete. The score here at the Polo Grounds, the New York Mets eight, and the Philadelphia Phillies nothing. Now the Phillies will have Ted Savage out to lead off against Al Jackson as the game moves into the sixth inning. Inside and low, it's ball one. Sammy Taylor catching his first ball game for the New York Mets since joining the ball club. Sammy made an appearance yesterday, but he starts today's game. Sammy Taylor from Woodruff, South Carolina. First game up to the Milwaukee Braves was swapped from the Braves to the Chicago Cubs. Two, three, and four in the Philly batting order here on the top of the sixth inning. Ted Savage, the rookie outfielder, is over two. A high fly. It may go foul. It's going to be maybe completely out of here. And it is over the roof of the polo grounds with a foul ball. He really shillelagh that one. One ball and one strike to Ted Savage. He had a mighty big hand in directing Buffalo to the International League pennant and Little World Series last year. He batted 325. In comes the pitch to him. He tries to work him outside, misses the outside corner, and it's two balls and a strike on Ted Savage. For the Mets, eight runs on seven hits, no errors. And for the Phillies, no runs, four hits, four errors. Pitching two and one. Grounded foul coming right straight back. No play on the count now, two and two. A couple of injuries in action today around the league. Kenny Hubbs of the Chicago Cubs was hit with the pitch by Jack Sanford. And Johnny Edwards, the fine young receiver for the Cincinnati Reds, was struck above the right kneecap with a foul tip, and he had to leave the ball game. Al Jackson winds and pitches. A ground ball laced to shortstop. To his left is Elio Chacon. He's up, throws in time. Elio Chacon gliding to his left to throw out Ted Savage. One down in the visiting sixth inning, and the hitter will be Don Demeter. Demeter beat out of base at his last time up. He has one for two. 
Don Demeter hitting at 260. He's got a lot of power. Here's the pitch on the way. Fastball on the outside corner, strike one. Mantilla guarding the line against Demeter, a full hitter. Elio Chacon, a strider two over toward the hole at short. Check swing and a slow grounder down the third baseline. Jackson up with it, throws off balance, not in time. What a try by Al Jackson. Big swing by Demeter, and he just topped one of those slow rollers down the third baseline. Jackson, a superb fielder, running at full speed, glove-handed the ball right on the line, just whirled and threw. He was way off balance when he threw it. It's a base hit for Don Demeter. Base hit number five for the Phillies, and the hitter is the cleanup batter, Roy Sieber. He hit a hard line drive that Neal caught in the second. He took a call third strike in the fourth inning, so Roy is 0 for 2. 13-year veteran waiting. Curve in the dirt, ball one. Back in 1953, it looked like Roy might be all through due to an injury. That year he hit 270, but only eight home runs, and he knocked only 35 runs in. So he was swapped to Washington for Gil Cohn, and since then he's never hit under 20 home runs in a season. A fly ball hit high in the air to right field. It's going to be hard to reach. There, It may go right down the line. Foul. They play Severs to pull. The outfield swung way around, and that foul ball just missed the line. It was fouled by about a yard or so. One and one on Roy Severs. At the end of two and a half, the Giants lead the Cubs two to nothing. Hobby against Sanford. Nothing yet on the Pittsburgh L.A. doubleheader. Nothing yet on Milwaukee at Houston. Yankees beat Washington 3-2 in the first game. Second game is being delayed because of rain. A delayed or call, Joe. Ball two, two and one. Is that game uh, just being held up or is it called? Second Yankee game being held up because of rain. Red Sox and the White Sox are tied one-to-one at the end of five. Swall against Bizarre. Baltimore nothing. Kansas City nothing at the end of one. Pappas against Fister. Foul ball back toward the press box. Two and two. Right here, the Mets are out in front. Eight to nothing. Phillies batting in the top of the sixth inning. One out, they have Don Demeter on first and a 2-2 count on Roy Sievers. He leans in and then takes outside and low, ball three, and the string is out, three and two. Roy Sievers is certainly one of the most popular figures in baseball. He of the picture swing. Count three and two. Mets with the infield looking for two. Now the pitch. A fly ball to left center field. Jim Hickman just standing there waiting. He may not have to move. He doesn't. Two down. Hickman was shading toward left center, and he didn't have to move. All he had to do was be patient. Two outs, one on. The batter is Jackie Davis, the rookie right fielder. He hit a line drive, a country mile his first time up today. Over the head of Jim Hickman, the ball landed on the runway to the clubhouses and straight away center field at first hit about 450 feet from home plate. Foul ball off the plate, strike one. So Davis has one for two. He was struck out by Jackson his second time up. Now the little left-hander from Waco, Texas takes his sign from Sammy Taylor. And the pitch on the way. Off-speed delivery, he lays off of it. One ball, one strike. One and one to Jackie Davis. Stockley built right-hand batter with good power. The 1-1 pitch, in the dirt, blocked by Sammy Taylor. No advance on the baselines. Phillies trailing 8 to nothing. They'll be taking no chances out there. Two 
Two and one, the count on Davis. Fouled again. He just barely got a piece of that one, and the count is even now at two and two. First game of a doubleheader, sixth inning, Phillies hitting with the Mets in front, eight to nothing. Two home runs in the game by Frank Thomas and Jim Hickman. Ground ball hit hard, go handed by Mantilla to his left, thrown to Neal, first play to return the side. Good play by Mantilla, lunging off to his left to glove hand the ball and then throw to Charlie Neal for the fourth play that ends the inning. No runs, one hit, no errors, and one left on. And now at the end of five and a half, the score, the Mets eight, and the Phillies nothing. The New York Mets will have Ilya Chacon to lead it off against lefty Chris Short in the last half of the sixth inning. Ilio has one for three, single to center in the fourth inning, later stole a base. Frank Thomas, Felix Mantilla, Sammy Taylor, and Jim Hickman have driven in the runs for the New York Mets. Strike one call. Frank knocked in the first run of the day with a homer to put the Mets in front one to nothing. The second run scored as the result of an error charge to Roy Severs. The third came in on an error charge to the shortstop. Mantilla knocked in the fourth one. Sammy Taylor knocked in the fifth one, the sixth in a wild pitch, and Hickman drove in the next two. One ball, one strike to Elio Chacon. Elio batting at 231 on 6-4-27. Stocky right-hand hitter, deep in the batter's box. Bluffs at a bunt, doesn't operate it, and it's outside, two balls and a strike. Phillies in the infield are figuring Chacon to hit up the middle. Ruben Amaro a bit towards second. Demeter even with the bag at third. Young Chris Short, the left-hander, winds and pitches. A fly ball in the air to right field. Backing up a stride goes Jackie Davis, and he takes it for the out. One away, nobody on in the last of the sixth inning. Gus Bell up to hit. Gus got that big inning going. With a base hit in the fourth. Twelve men came to the plate. Seven runs came in to score. Mets scored seven runs on four hits. They were aided by three errors, plus a hit batsman and a wild pitch. Pitch is over a strike on the outside corner, but they were getting the hits when they counted. Now the windup pitched by Short. Ground ball hit down the first baseline. Big hop fielded by Roy Severs. He waves the pitcher off and takes the play himself. Two men down. Frank Thomas comes on to hit. Frank got his name in the National League record book when he was hit twice in one inning with a pitch. His first time up, he was nicked by Art Mahaffey and the second time by Frank Sullivan. Johnny DeMerritt is being sent down to the bullpen, perhaps, to play some catch and get warmed up for a defensive move for the late innings of the game. Frank, one for one, a home run. He holds up on a breaking ball. One ball, no strikes. Eight to nothing, New York leading. We're in the last half of the sixth inning. Check swing and a foul ball. One ball, one strike. Now Rod Keneal is headed toward the bullpen, and perhaps he's going to loosen up his arm. And Rod really used his running speed to a big advantage in the game yesterday when he brought that seventh run across the plate, scoring from second on a wild pitch. Pitch was uncorked by Chris Short, the left-hander who's in the game right now. The 1-1 one -one delivery. Swing and a miss. He slowed up on that one. One ball and two strikes to Frank Thomas. Play has been resumed in the second game of the Yankee-Washington doubleheader now in Washington. 
hope that rain stays down there. Here's the one-two pitch. A high fly ball to left center, fairly deep, drifting back at Stony Gonzalez. He's under it in left center and puts it away for the third out. No runs, no hits, no errors, and none left on. And now six innings complete. The score of the New York Mets, eight, and the Philadelphia Phillies, nothing. Thanks very much, Bob Murphy. Manager Casey Single has come out now and is checking with Dan Landis, the umpire behind the plate. Uh, defensive changes are going to be made here, apparently, because Frank Thomas is bringing his glove on in. He has started out. And Thomas is uh, coming back toward the dugout area. Apparently, we're going to have a defensive change in left field. Around the infield, uh, the defense is the same. Gil Hodges is at first. Uh, Charlie Neal is at second. Elio Chacon is at short. And Felix Mantilla is at third. Battery men the same. Taylor is the catcher. And Jackson is the pitcher. And John Demerit is going into left field. And now... Uh, an additional switch. It's going to be Demerit moving over to right field. John Demerit is in right. Hickman is staying in center. And it is uh, Rod Keneal going into left field. Rod Keneal is playing left field. So make those changes uh, if you're keeping a scorecard. For the Mets, Keneal in place of Thomas in left and Demerit now in place of Bell and Wright. The announcement being made. John Demerit announced as batting number three in the batting order in place of Gus Bell. And Rod Keneal is being announced as batting fourth in the batting order. At the plate now, Tony Gonzalez for the Phillies. Here's the pitch swung on and fouled off for strike one. Al Jackson started. He has come all the way for the New York Mets. As the Phillies bat here in the top half of the seventh inning, the Mets leading by a score of eight to nothing. Through six innings of play, the New York Mets have eight runs on seven hits and no errors. The Phillies have no runs on five hits, and they have committed four errors. Al Jackson into the windup. The pitch to Gonzalez is in there for a call strike. It's a two-strike count now. Gonzalez off to short, and he's single in the fifth inning. He is one for two here this afternoon. That's swing and a drive. One hop past Charlie Neal at second base and on out into center field. Actually, Demerit comes across in front of Hickman, picks it up, fires it back in. Gonzalez comes to a skidding halt and returns to the bag at first. It's a base hit for Gonzalez, his second of the day. Smashed hard past Charlie Neal. It looked for a moment as though Neal were going to be able to get a glove on it. It was one hop past him. So the Phillies open up here in the top half of the seventh inning with a single. Putting Gonzalez on at first and catcher Sammy White is at the plate. He walked and he flied to center. He's nothing for one. Sammy White has a batting average of 182 right now. That pitch is in there for a call strike. Fastball, cut corner, and it's strike one to Sammy White. He has no home runs and one run batted in thus far this season. That pitch is low, and it's 1-1. One, one. one ball and one strike. Tall, rangy Sammy White, the catcher for the Phillies. Came to the Phillies from the Milwaukee Braves. Before that, he was on the retirement list, and before that, he was with the Boston Red Sox. Gonzalez leads it first. The pitch swung on and a ground ball to third. Mancia as it goes to Neal at second. He's out there. Relay to first. He's out there. Double play. Gil Hodges giving it a big stretch. Gil Hodges at first gave it a big stretch to take the relay from Charlie Neal and had uh, cut off of an extra step there. Two men out. Nobody on. Shortstop Ruben Amaro is coming up. Sammy White hitting the, into a double play from third to second to first. Mancia to Neal to Hodges. Two men out, nobody on. Amaro has been up twice without a hit. He grounded out third to first, and he struck out. Al Jackson, the left-hander, winds and fires. The pitch is in there for a call strike one. Fastball burned right down the pipe. Here's the pitch. It's in there for a call strike. Just above the knees. 
So it's a two-strike count to Ruben Amaro. And Ed Keegan, a right-hander, is now throwing in the bullpen for the Philadelphia Phillies. Ed Keegan, who finished up yesterday, is now throwing in the bullpen for the Phillies. Jackson pitches low this time. It's one and two now to Ruben Amaro with two men out and nobody on for the Phillies. Batting in the top half of the seventh inning with the New York Mets leading by a score of eight to nothing. Amaro now saying something to umpire Stan Landis behind the plate. Now we're set to play once again with a count of one ball and two strikes to the shortstop. Left-hander Al Jackson in the windup to pitch down. Check swing, and he takes it as a ball high. Almost came around. It's two and two now. Ed Keegan still throwing in the bullpen for the fills with pitcher Chris Short due up here next. There's a swing and a fly ball going deep to right center field. This could be in between, and it is. It falls safely. Jim Hickman comes up with it. Amaro pulls up at second with a stand-up double into right center field. A stand-up double into right center field by Ruben Amaro. And Bobby Malkmus is going to be the hitter here. Bobby Malkmus is going to bat for Chris Short. There is the announcement. Bobby Malkmus, a right-hand batter, coming up for Chris Short. As the Phil's trail by eight runs, Ed Keegan throwing in the bullpen with the pitcher out now for the pinch hitter. It's in there for a call strike. Two Malkmus. Ruben Amaro, the base runner at second base, with two men out. Al Jackson, taking plenty of time now, getting the sign from catcher Sammy Taylor. He's into the stretch. The pitch is on the way. Swung on and popped up towards second base. Charlie Neal stands right there, moves about three steps and takes it for the out. So pinch hitter Malkmus has popped out. The second baseman Charlie Neal and in the top half of the seventh inning. The Philadelphia Phillies get no run on two hits, no errors, and one left. And at the end of six and one half innings of play at the Polo Grounds in New York, the score is... The New York Mets, eight, and the Philadelphia Phillies, nothing. And now Ed Keegan is coming on to pitch for the Philadelphia Phillies as the Mets come to bat in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Ed Keegan, a right-hander, making his fourth appearance of the season. He pitched one inning yesterday in which he gave up one run on three hits, walked one and struck out none. On opening day, he got in for two innings against the Milwaukee Braves. Gave up no runs on one hit. And uh, he got in against the Milwaukee Braves for three innings on the 25th of April, in which he gave up one run on two hits. So Keegan has no one or loss record. He is 22 years of age. He is six feet three inches tall, 160 pounds, from Camden, New Jersey. Lifetime Major League record, no victories and three losses in National League competition. So that is the book on Ed Keegan. He is the fourth pitcher of the day for the Philadelphia Phillies. Art Mahaffey started and is the pitcher of record. Frank Sullivan relieved him, was removed for a pinch hitter. Chris Short was removed for a pinch hitter. And now Ed Keegan coming on to pitch in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Before Charlie Neal comes up in order to allow our stations to identify themselves, we pause now for station identification. This is WGY Schenectady. This is Lindsay Nelson with Bob Murphy and Ralph Kiner at the Polo Grounds as Charlie Neal comes up now for the Mets. He is nothing for three this afternoon. He had two home runs yesterday. Neal's batting average right now, 340 for the season. He has three home runs and nine runs batted in. Ed Keegan, the pitcher, is a right-hander. He dips into the windup, and here is the pitch on the way. Curveball in there for a call strike one to Charlie Neal. New York Mets eighth to Philadelphia Phillies nothing. This is the first game of a scheduled doubleheader. 
at the Polo Grounds this Sunday afternoon. Pitch is low and away into the dirt. Backhanded by catcher Sammy White. It's 1-1 to Charlie Neal at the plate. With Gil Hodges on deck, and he'll be followed by Felix Mantilla. Keegan has the sign, shrugs his shoulders into the windup to pitch curveball, misses high, and it's two and one. Two balls and one strike to right-hand batter Charlie Neal. Obtained by the New York Mets by trade and purchase from the Los Angeles Dodgers. Lee Walls and Cash for Charlie Neal was the deal. The pitch misses outside, and it's three and one now to Neal. Lee Walls, of course, had been selected by the New York Mets off the roster of the Philadelphia Phillies at the bonus price of $125,000. Mets had four $125,000 choices. Zimmer, Walls, Miller, and Hook. As a swing and a foul ball coming back, Taylor's giving it a run, hoping for a play, gets to the dugout area, and it hits on top of the dugout and bounds up into the first box and it's caught in the first box. Well, that's sort of a cheap souvenir, taken on a high hop off the dugout roof. By the time the newspaper man gets that one home tonight, it will be a stinging line drive back into the stands. Count to Charlie Neal, three balls and two strikes as the swing is out full to him. Keegan again is set to work. Charlie Neal swinging the bat, waiting for the 3-2 pitch. Keegan is held up for a moment. Now he is going into the windup, and the pitch swung on and fouled off out of play. Coming off to the right side. In the second game of today's doubleheader, Paul Brown is scheduled to go for the Philadelphia Phillies. He's a 20-year-old uh, youngster. And for the New York Mets, Sherman Jones, right-hander, is the scheduled pitcher. 3-2 pitch to Charlie Neal. He has a call strike three, and he's out. So Charlie Neal is caught looking, one away, and Gil Hodges is coming up. Gil struck out. Out on a field is choice and single. One for three, and he has scored one run today. Hodges right now is batting 320. Has two home runs and two runs batted in, and the one that he hit here yesterday, the homer, was hit a ton. It's a curveball down the line and left. It's a foul ball, but it is one hop to the wall. A high fly ball down the left field line, out of play. Ted Savage gave it a run, but here at the Polo Grounds, of course, outfielders in left and right have a long run to get over to the line because they don't play as they would in uh, other ballparks where there's a long distance down the line. They uh, both shade over towards center field. That's where the room is here at the Polo Grounds. And they give you the lines pretty well. Ed Keegan has a one-strike count. Gil Hodges, he winds and fires, curveball, a slow curve, is swung on and fouled out of play. This one up on the rooftop, back of the ragged third, and uh, rolling on off and into the street. The two-strike count now to Hodges. A new supply of baseball is out to umpire Stan Landis behind the plate. Here's a pitch. It's in there for a call strike three. And Hodges is out, caught looking. So Keegan is coming here to strike out Neal and strike out Hodges. Two away, nobody out. And third baseman Felix Mantia is coming up. Struck out, single to drive and a run, and was out on an error. He is one for three, and he has scored one run this afternoon. Mantia's batting average right now, 3-11. One home run and four runs batted in. A new ball out to pitcher Ed Keegan.
Catcher Sammy Taylor swinging the bats in the on-deck circle now for the New York Mets in his first start this afternoon in the Mets uniform. And the slow curve that misses low and away at ball one. Taylor appeared yesterday as a pinch hitter and drew a walk. That walk eventually became the winning run in the ball game for the Mets yesterday as they defeated the Philadelphia Phillies by a score of 8-6. to six. And today they're leading the Phillies by a score of 8 to nothing. Pitch is low to Mantilla. It's two balls and no strikes now. Two men out and nobody on base for the New York Mets. In the bottom half of the seventh inning. Ken Keegan is set to work. This is a fly ball deep to right center field. Gonzalez gets over, and Gonzalez hauls it down in deep right center out in front of the bleacher area off the bat of Mantilla as Keegan gets the nuts out in order in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Getting Neil Hodges and Mantilla with no runs on no hits, no errors, and nobody left. And at the end of seven full innings to play, the score is the New York Mets eight and the Philadelphia Phillies nothing. Right now we're going to the top half of the eighth inning and for the Philadelphia Phillies, Leadoff man Tony Taylor is at the plate. He has been up three times without a hit here this afternoon. Al Jackson into the windup, and the pitch is low and away for ball one. As a drive that is deflected by Jackson, he can't make a play. Recovers the ball, and Tony Taylor is on with the base hit. Smashed back through the box. Jackson managed to knock it down, but that is all he could do. He chased it then on in the direction of shortstop, but uh, had no play. So it's an infield hit for Tony Taylor, leading off. The top half of the eighth inning for the Philadelphia Phillies, and that brings up left fielder Ted Savage, who has been up three times without a hit. He grounded out pitcher to first. He flies to right, and he grounded out short to first. Left-hander Al Jackson, the starter, has come all the way for the New York Mets. This is his third start of the season. He came in here this afternoon with a record of no victories and two losses. Following the second loss as a starter, he was relegated to bullpen duty. Of course, practically everyone on the New York Mets staff is seen. Which is in there for a call strike. Savage is a big right-hand batter with power. Jackson again checks the runner, Taylor, at first. He takes his lead. The pitch to Savage is outside for ball. One and one, the count now. Top half of the eighth inning. The first game of a scheduled Sunday afternoon doubleheader. Swing and a miss. One and two now to Ted Savage. Turns, comes out of the batter's box, picks up a handful of dirt, throws it away, and steps back in. Where's the big number seven on his back? Now Savage is set once again. Al Jackson on the mound goes into the stretch as Taylor takes his lead at first base. The pitch to Savage swung on and fouled off on the ground. Manager team lost started to feel the ball, then let it go right between his legs in the coaching box at third. Count holds at one ball and two strikes. Ted Savage at the plate. Manager Gene Mock of the Phils, of course, came to the Major Leagues with the Brooklyn Dodgers. Initially, as a very young fellow, finished his playing career with the Boston Red Sox. Went out to manage the Minneapolis club and was hired while he was there as the manager of the Philadelphia Phillies. Pitch is low for a ball. Before he finished up as a player with the Red Sox, he had managed the Atlanta club and the Southern Association. 2-2 Two -two is the count now to Ted Savage. Ground ball, going to shortstop. Chacon has it over to Neal. He's out. The relay to first. He's safe. He is safe at first base. Beats the relay. So 
Ted Savage, fourth, Tony Taylor. One away, Savage becomes the base runner at first now. And Don Demeter comes up. He's two for three this afternoon. Glad to right, had an infield hit and then single to left. Yesterday he had two home runs. He swings a big bat for the Philadelphia Phillies. There's a ground ball to Chacon. It's short over to Neal. He's out to relay to first. He's out. Double play. Don Demeter hitting into the double play from Chacon to Neal to Hodges. As the Philadelphia Phillies go out in the top half of the eighth inning with no runs on one hit, no errors, and nobody left. And at the end of seven and one half innings of play at the Polo Grounds in New York, the score is the New York Mets eight and the Philadelphia Phillies nothing. Coming now to the bottom half of the eighth inning. And Sammy Taylor will be up to lead off for the New York Mets. He is one for three this afternoon. Single in the third inning, grounded out in the fourth inning, grounded out in the fifth inning. He is batted in one run, making his first start in the uniform of the New York Mets. Yesterday, he was used as a pinch hitter, drew a walk. This time last week, he was with the Chicago Cubs. Ed Keegan, the fourth Philly pitcher of the day. Right-hander on the mound. Art Mahaffey started as the pitcher of record. Frank Sullivan removed for a pinch hitter. Chris Short removed for a pinch hitter. Ed Keegan, the current pitcher. Sammy Taylor is a left-hand batter. Originally signed by the Milwaukee Braves as a bonus player. Traded to the Chicago Cubs by the Braves in exchange for pitcher Bob Rush. His pitch swung on and fouled off. It is over, out of play. Back to the bag at third. Into the upper deck. It's a strike one count now to Taylor. The New York Mets. Eighth, the Philadelphia Phillies, nothing. Keegan is looking in to get the sign from catcher Sammy White. As it now dips into the windup, pitch high and away. One and one now to Sammy Taylor. Pitcher Al Jackson do up next, and then leadoff man Jim Hickman as the Mets bat in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Pitch swung on and fouled off the ground back that had Jackie Lavagetto doing a hop, skip, and jump in the coaching box at first base. Took him moving around to get out of the way of that one. One ball and two strikes now to Taylor. Before the ball game, we were talking to Cookie about pronunciation. About the pronunciation of his name. Saying that we call it Lavigetto, which he calls it. And then we hear from all sorts of people who say you ought to call it Lavigetto. And we call it Lavigetto, and we hear from people who say you ought to call it Lavigetto. And then uh, I said we mentioned Harry, which is his first name, and everybody says who? Cookie Lavagetto, the coach at first for the New York Mets. One and two. Swung on and tipped off. Sammy Taylor got a little piece of that one. So the count holds at one and two to Taylor. Nobody on, nobody out for the Mets in the bottom half of the eighth inning. First game of a scheduled doubleheader. Keegan's pitch tipped off. Count holds at one and two. Keegan rubbing up the new baseball. Sammy Taylor has a wide stance up there at the plate. Slightly open. Keegan now into the windup. Here's the pitch. Swung out another drive going deep to right center. Gonzalez is moving way over. He's underneath and he takes it for the out. Well hit by Taylor, but Gonzalez, who ranges around pretty well out there, hauled it down. And Al Jackson gets a hand as he comes up. Pitcher Al Jackson. A 
Big hand all around the ballpark for Al Jackson. The first time up, he executed a perfect sacrifice bunt. Second time up, he walked. And the third time up, he struck out. So officially, he has nothing for one. Here's a swing and a fly ball to center field. Gonzalez coming fast. He has it. Two away. Gonzalez has ranged around. I say he was not in the starting lineup posted initially during batting practice by manager Gene Moss. Don Dillard was going to play center field today, and Mel Roach was going to be at third, but Roach came up with a sore shoulder. Told the manager just before game time that he couldn't play, so Dillard was put back at third base, and Gonzalez was put in the lineup in center field. Gonzalez has ranged around out there defensively very well today and has two base hits into the bargain. Here's Jim Hickman for the New York Mets up now. Here's a young fellow who has shown the fine advantage in his recent appearances in the lineup. The slender, tall, right-hand batter. He has a home run today, a two-run homer it was. Here's the pitch. Low and away, he had a home run yesterday. Today he struck out, slide to left, hit a home run, struck out. Two men out, nobody on here. There was never any doubt in anybody's mind about the ability of this young man to play the outfield. He has a long, gliding stride. He can cover ground. He has a good arm. He's a fine base runner. The only question was whether or not he would be able to hit Major League pitching. And the fact that he has been stuck in the batting order recently, he has shown a good advantage. So at least he is off to a good start and is getting his chance with the New York Mets. Ed Keegan now in the lineup to pitch it low for ball. Two balls and no strikes. The count to Jim Hickman. Selected by the New York Mets off the roster of the St. Louis Cardinals in the expansion draft. Swing and a foul ball back onto the screen. Two balls and one strike to count to Jim Hickman now. Hickman attended the University of Mississippi. His freshman year there, he played basketball as well as baseball. Homer's in Tennessee. Jim Keegan has a sign, dips into the windup. Here's the 2 1 pitch. Swinging a ground ball. Demeter backs up and it goes on through. Into left field. Demeter was going to back up a few steps on that one, uh, which is sometimes deadly for a third baseman, and in Demeter's case, it was. That will bring up Elio Chacon. That was scored as an error on Demeter. Scored as an error on Demeter. Five errors today for the Philadelphia Phillies. Here is Elio Chacon at the plate. He is one for four this afternoon. Right-hand batter. Hickman takes his lead at first. Keegan is into the stretch. Here's the pitch to the plate. Down low. Dug up by Sammy White, the catcher. We're in the bottom half of the eighth inning with the New York Mets leading the Philadelphia Phillies by a score of eight to nothing. The beginning for the Mets was the fourth in which they sent 12 men to the plate. First time in history they ever sent 12 men to the plate in one inning. A history-making inning for the Mets in that respect. It's a pitch uh, change and it's taken low for ball two. In the bottom half of the fourth, the Mets got seven runs on four hits over three Philly errors and two men were left on base. Hickman takes his lead now at first base. Ed King is into the stretch. Pitch is low and away. It's ball three now to Elio Chacon. Keegan is set to work. Pitch is low. He walked him. Ball four. Aurelio Chacon goes down to first. That moves Jim Hickman to second. Runners at first and second. Two men out. And John Demerit coming up. John Demerit is uh, 
The right fielder, he came in to relieve Gus Bell last inning in right for the New York Mets. It's an open stance at the plate. Originally was signed as a bonus player with the Milwaukee Braves, selected off their roster by the New York Mets. Two men out, runners at first and second. Right-hand pitcher Keegan is into the stretch. Runners leading. Pitch to Demerit is low and away for ball one. Rod Keneal swinging the bats in the on-deck circle. He'll be up next. He went in in relief of Frank Thomas in left field. Actually, during his career, Keneal has seen more action as an outfielder than as an infielder, where he has been playing up late with the New York Mets. Keegan is into the stretch. Slow curve, and it's in there for a call strike. It's 1-1. One, one. John DeMerit has moved back out of the batter's box. Now he's coming back in. Keegan set. Runners leading. Pitch. Slow curve and popped up. The short stop. And it is taken now by Roy Sievers, who came across and took it back of the mound. Roy Sievers, the first baseman, came across and waved Drew Benamaro out of the way and took it. So, in the bottom half of the eighth inning, the Phils are out, or the Mets are out, with no run on no hit. There was one Philly error and two men left on base. At the end of eight full innings of play, the score is New York Mets eight, and the Philadelphia Phillies nothing. So here we go, top of the ninth inning. Roy Sievers, a right-handed batter, in the batter's box. Roy 0 for 3 today. He started the ball game with a 135 average. Jackson's first pitch, foul away, strike one. In the National League, other games, San Francisco with a big lead over the Chicago Cubs. They lead 6 to nothing at the end of 4 and 1 half innings. That's the first game of a doubleheader. Milwaukee is out in the top of the first. Houston coming to bat in another National League game. Jackson with a curveball to Roy Seaver, strike two. No balls and two strikes. St. Louis walloping Cincinnati. 13 to two. Jackson outside. One ball, two strikes. 13 to two in favor of the St. Louis Cardinals at the end of seven. That's the first game of a doubleheader. Right here, eight to nothing, the New York Mets. Seaver hits a curveball deep to left center field. Thomas coming over, make it the left fielder coming over, and he makes the catch. Rod Keneal, who went in in left field for Frank Thomas, had to come over, flip his glasses down, and make a nice running catch for out number one. So a one-man gun in the top of the ninth as Al Jackson looks for his shutout and now pitching to Jackie Davis. Davis swings at a fastball and misses strike one. Davis had the first hit off Jackson, a long triple to deep center field. Now the left-hander to the right-handed batter. A let-up, sworn on and missed strike two. And Davis completely fooled, missed it by the... A proverbial country mile. No balls and two strikes. Now the left-hander into the windup and the two-strike pitch. Down in the dirt, a curveball. One ball, two strikes. Al Jackson with one leg of three on a shutout. One man out. Now Jackson back to the plate. A curveball just missing. All two. Two balls and two strikes. Two-two pitch. Just outside. Just missing on the outside corner. So now the count. Three balls and two strikes. Those last two pitches. Just a fraction off the plate. Sometimes you wonder how a batter with two strikes can take a pitch that close. 
So Jackson working with the string all the way out at three and two. And there's a fly ball hit off a fastball to shallow left field. Caneel broke back. Now coming in strongly, but Chacon is pulled out of the left field and he makes the catch. Rod Caneel in left field had broken back on the play and he could not have gotten to the ball, but Chacon went out into shallow left field and made the catch for out number two. So now Al Jackson only one batter away from the first shutout by a New York men. And he's got a tough man here. It's Tony Gonzalez. Gonzalez has two hits and three times up. He takes inside a ball. Gonzalez with two of the eight hits given up by Al Jackson. One ball pitches outside. It's ball two. Sammy Taylor, the catcher in the ball game for Jackson, walking out in front of the plate, saying something to Jackson, then returning the ball. Jackson back to the plate, and he catches on the inside corner for a called strike. Dan Landis giving the signal as Tony Gonzalez backs out of the box as though to inquire why. Well, Jackson with a two-ball, one-strike count, and two men out in the top of the ninth. The Mets lead eight to nothing. A foul ball. I think it came back to the plate with a fastball. And so the count now, two balls and two strikes. Well, during the spring last year, Jackson just missed completing the game when he had two strikes on the batter and two outs in the ninth inning couldn't get the next strike and he couldn't last the game right here he's only a strike away from a shutout two balls and two strikes two outs to score eight to nothing in favor of the Mets and here's the 2-2 fifth her ball inside ball three so now Jackson all the way down the line with Tony Gonzalez three balls and two strikes Jackson takes a deep breath in the mound, looks in for the sign. Takes it, goes into the windup, and now the 3 2 pitch. Fastball, four out of this, right three, and that retires the side. Al Jackson pitching the first shutout in the history of the New York Mets, and the New York Mets win it. In the inning for the Philadelphia Phillies, no runs, no hits, no errors. And the score at the end of the ball game, the Mets 8, the Philadelphia Phillies nothing.